Today, I'm showing you how I primed and painted the Bugatti body to get ready for the next step, which will be 2K clear coating. I'm Patrick, and this is Setney Scale Garage. Let's get to it. First off, let me apologize myself as the exposure throughout this video is way off most of the time, getting me a somehow burnt image. I tried to correct it, but couldn't get the quality I was expecting. Also, the white tissue on the table didn't help at all, so please excuse me for that. As you see, I started priming with white fine surface primer from Tamiya. It's decanted to a jar using the method you can see in the video linked in the upper right corner. So, this is the first coat of primer. My airbrushing workflow when it comes to the body of a car is applying very light coats each time, letting 5 to 10 minutes to dry between coats. The way I paint is going from side to side and up and down when needed, opening the paint flow before hitting the part and closing it after passing it. This may seem like a waste of paint, but believe me, it's not, mainly for two reasons. One is that you will put on the part more paint than you should outside, and the other is that this way you will be covering all the surface evenly. You should try to avoid staying on the same spot for too long or passing too slowly as it will flood it and eventually will get runs in the paint, reactions on the plastic or weird shadows in the final paint job. I found some people who ask if the use of primer is mandatory. My answer is an absolute yes. It doesn't matter if you use acrylics, enamels or lacquers. Prime every part you're going to paint. That will be useful for some points. You will find possible imperfections on the surface and will unify the surface either in texture as in color. Primer color will be important for the base coat as some paint colors have better coverage than others. Thus, you will have a very hard time trying to cover a dark primer with white, red or yellow paint for example than if it was primed in white or light gray. Also, red paint covers and shows better after a pink primer, although they are not that easy to get. I'm showing you this whole first coat of primer so you can see how thin the layers are. Next coats will be played faster. We are going with coat number two. It's important to cover all the nooks and crannies in the parts, either at the priming stage or base coating. It's very annoying when you are at the following steps of the build only to find yourself with an unpainted area. Plus, Murphy says it will be the most visible area on the model, so be careful here. As you can see, coat by coat, we will build a complete coverage of the surface. Again, it's very important not to flood the painted parts, as unwanted reactions may happen on the painted surface, ruining your job. I'd rather go with 3, 4 or even more coats if it's necessary. In this case, decanted Tamiya spray cans together with Tamiya lacquer thinner is more forgiving as the thinner isn't that aggressive, but better be safe than sorry. Coat number 3 now. You will see that putting on such thin coats will build the coverage step by step without fading the panel lines out. Yo, cash flow.
Now that the final primer coat is applied and cured for several hours, it's time to apply the pearl white color to the areas it must be. It's made by House of Color, under the name of Snow White. It's an automotive lacquer. Automotive lacquers come in cans, bigger or smaller depending on your order, but they are not ready to use as is. They must be thinned down accordingly in order to wear brush them. Remember, they are automotive paints and it's not the same shooting them with a 1.2mm needle as in a spray gun than a 0.5mm as I'm using in my airbrush right now. The thinning ratio should be what you feel comfortable with. In my case, I feel confident about thinning it at 2 to 1 ratio, meaning two parts of paint for every part of thinner. I used Mr. Hobby Leveling Thinner and had good results with it. Lacquers usually dry fast. Letting between 5 to 10 minutes from one coat to the next will be enough. This is the fifth coat of pearl white. sixth and final coat. To be honest, probably this coat wasn't necessary, but I had some paint left in the cup and didn't want to throw it away, so a little more won't hurt. Now, after a couple hours, I masked all the necessary areas to protect them from blue. The blue used is TS-19 Metallic Blue from Tamiya, the candy to shoot with the airbrush. This is code number two. I'm sorry you couldn't see the first code. I forgot to hit the record button on the camera. Again, you can see how thin the coats are, barely covering any surface. Color should be built little by little, trying not to flood the surface. 
Third coat of blue. Fifth and final coat of blue. Most Amiya TS spray cans dry glossy unless otherwise specified. That's a special feature of these colors. Automotive lacquers dry flat so don't try to get the same glossy finish as in TS's. Now that the paint is properly dry after several minutes, I took all the masking away to reveal the two-tone paint. You must ensure that all the paint is really dry to avoid leaving marks on the paint. If you are not sure about the dryness of the lacquer, leave it for one hour. That would be plenty of time. Be careful peeling the tape as a too hard pull might peel the paint underneath as well.
that's it for today. Make sure you like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications of new videos. Thanks for watching, have a good one and see you next time. Thank you.